Welcome to this Arnold Culliford Knitwear tutorial on short row shaping. This video forms part of our Year of Techniques series, 12 knitting projects to help you upgrade your knitting skills. Our short row project for the month is Ruskia by Woolly Wormhead, which is a sideways hat. And short rows are used to shape the crown of the hat, as well as to make sure that the brim fits snugly. So if you look, you can see that we have a panel which is repeated around the hat where a series of short rows are worked. Short rows are simply where you don't work to the end of the row. They're a bit shorter than a normal row. And we use a clever technique to prevent there from being a hole where the rows are turned. You can use either short row shaping with a wrap and turn or German short rows. Both work very well in garter stitch and this video will walk you through both how to work the short row but also how to work back over those stitches when you come to work the full length of the row again. I'm going to show you how to work a wrap and turn. It works particularly well in garter stitch because the wraps are really well camouflaged by the garter stitch and you don't need to work across them. Um, you don't need to do anything special when you work across them. So we follow the pattern until we reach the point where we need to do a wrap and turn. So this next stitch on the left hand needle is the one that we need to wrap and turn. So we slip that stitch from the left needle to the right needle. We bring the yarn to the front between the needles. And then we slip the stitch back to the left hand needle. And you should be able to see that the yarn is now wrapping the bottom of that stitch. Then we turn ready to work back, ready to work back in the other direction. Let's just do that one more time. So we work in pattern until we reach the stitch to wrap and turn. So we want to put a wrap and turn around the next stitch on the left needle, slip it from left to right, bring the yarn between the needles, slip it back and then turn round and we're ready to work back to the end of the row. Now that we've worked a series of rows, you can see each wrapped stitch on the end there and this side of the fabric has many fewer rows than the other end of the fabric so we're creating a shape within the knitting. Here's a swatch where I've worked a series of short rows, each one one stitch longer than the next. All of these stitches have wraps around the bottom of them, there's one there. And when we come to work back across it, all we're going to do is to just knit along, completely ignoring those wraps. When you work in stocking stitch or other stitch patterns, you need to work the wrap with the stitch so that the wrap is hidden on the wrong side of the fabric. But in garter stitch, they're really well disguised and you don't need to do that. So all we have to do now is just knit across completely as normal. And we're now working in a different direction thanks to those short rows. And that's wrap and turn. German short rows also work brilliantly in garter stitch. When you work a German short row, it creates these double stitches where we've already worked a short row. And I'm going to show you how to do a German short row and how to work back across them. So we work in pattern until we reach the instruction to work the German short row or to wrap and turn. So it's this next stitch here 
which is going to be the stitch where a wrap and turn would be worked or where we want our German short row. And we knit it and then we slip it back to the left hand needle. We turn and then we pull the yarn from the front over the top of the needle firmly down so that the stitch below is stretched right over the needle and that's why you get this double stitch because it's the two sides of the stitch below being pulled right over the needle. We then continue to hold firmly on it and knit back along the row or work in pattern as your pattern instructs you to. So let's do that once more. Work in pattern until we reach the wrap and turn instruction or the German short row instruction. And it's this next stitch here that we want to use for our German short row. We knit it, we slip it back to the left needle. We're then going to turn the work our yarn's at the front and we're going to pull it firmly, pull it firmly right across the back so that we get that double stitch. And then continuing to hold firmly, work back to the end of the row. If we look at our fabric now, you can see here are the double stitches that are created by that German short row. And down at this end of the fabric, we have fewer rows have been worked. And this end of the fabric has more rows that have been worked because we've stopped before we've reached the end of the row. Here's a swatch I've worked earlier where we've got a series of double stitches from the German short row. And what we're going to do now is work back across the whole of this row. And we're going to work each of those double stitches as a single stitch. So our first stitch wasn't worked in a German front row, so that's just a normal knit. But then as we work along here, we're going to knit the whole of that double stitch together as one. You can now see that we're back to normal stitches and we've changed the direction of the knitting. The rows were going this way, but now they're going to go this way. And on the wrong side, you can see the double stitches along that row on the back. But again, it's a very neat way of working short rows in garter stitch. Now you've seen two different ways of working short rows that are particularly suitable for garter stitch. There's really no particular benefit of one over the other. It just depends on your own knitting style, which one you prefer, which one gives the, the best look for you in your finished project. So why not try them both on a small swatch? If you'd like to know more about a year of techniques, do visit our website, acknitwear.co.uk. And why not try something new today?